फजले उमर तेरे He will be characterized with grandeur, greatness and wealth. He will come into the world and will heal many of their disorders through his messianic qualities and through the blessings of the Holy Spirit. He will be extremely intelligent and understanding and will be meek of heart and will be filled with secular and spiritual knowledge. We shall pour our spirit into him and he will be sheltered under the shadow of God. He will grow rapidly in stature. His fame will spread to the ends of the earth and people will be blessed through him. This is part of the magnificent divine prophecy received by the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, in answer to his solicitations to God for 40 days in total seclusion in Hosharpur. He was told that within a period of nine years, he would be blessed with a son. All of the characteristics described in this divine revelation became evident in due course in the person of Hadrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad Sahib. He was a living personification of all the rare qualities enunciated in the prophecy. Mahmud. Hadrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad Sahib was born on the 12th of January, 1889, on a Saturday at Kadian, India. He was the eldest son of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, born from his second wife, Hadrat Saida Nasrat Jaha Begum Sahiba. الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم عندما تنبأ عن مجيء المسيح الثاني في آخر الزمان قال أنه سوف يتزوج ويولد له طبعا نحن نعرف أن الناس بشكل عام تتزوج ويولد لهم الأولاد لكن أن هناك نبوءة خاصة بأن هذه الولادة ولادة لولد خاص مميز وهذا ما سوف يأتي ببيانه in 1889, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, published a pamphlet to announce the birth of his son and to set out ten conditions of bayit. A short while later, he took the first Pledge of Allegiance at Ludhiana. It seemed as though God Almighty had planned his birth to coincide with the founding of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. His childhood was spent under the direct supervision of his revered father. There was a school in Kadiyan, I saw that school, District Board Primary School. In that you have started the education. After that, you have started the education of Islam High School. You have started the education of Islam High School. He could not do well in his studies due to his ill health. This was not merely incidental, but a great miracle of divine destiny. Incidents later proved that Allah Almighty Himself wanted to be His teacher. Thus the world witnessed that He not only had intrinsic and spiritual knowledge, but His insight into basic wisdom was so wide and deep, that even if the most learned scholar, armed with the barrage of worldly knowledge, attacked Islam, he would prove to be a mere academic novice. Hadrat Musleh Maud, being the son of the promised Messiah, he was very dear to Hadrat Khalifat al the first. And when Hadrat Khalifat al first became the Caliph, then he naturally <coughs> took Hadrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad, who was just a young boy at that time, in his care and looked after his religious education. Particularly, he learned from Hadrat Khalifat al the Holy Quran and the Ahad books of Ahadis, particularly the Bukhari, and also he learnt Masnavi, a Maulana room, and also some knowledge about Eastern medicine. During the lifetime of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, 
His burning desire was to serve the cause of Islam to the best of his ability. At the age of 17, he became a member of the Sadr Anjuman. आपने मजलस तशहीजुल अजहान हजम से मौला सलाम की जिंदगी में कैम फरमाई जिसमें चंद दोस्त जमा थे जो खिदमत दीन का जज्बा रखते थे उस मजलस के लिए हजरत मसीह मौदलाम से नाम तजवीज करने के लिए कहा गया तो हजूर ने ही उसका नाम तशहीजुल अजहान रखा और कुछ अरसे के बाद इस मजलस ने एक रिसाला भी जारी किया उस रिसाले का नाम भी तशहीजुल अजहान था which proved profoundly useful for the Jamaat. At the time of the promised Messiah's demise, peace be upon him, he was only 19 years of age. Even at that time, highly convincing and silencing replies to the criticism flowed from his august pen. On the 26th of May, 1908, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, passed away at Lahore. At that moment, this promised son stood by his bed and vowed, Even if all the people leave you, and I am left alone, I would stand by you, and would face all opposition to and onslaughts on your mission. This was not just an emotional claim made in a moment of grief by a pained son. Indeed, history bears unanimous testimony to the sincerity of his pledge. After the demise of Hazrat Musiya Maud Wasalam, Hazrat Muslim Maud uh, wrote uh, one small booklet uh, in Urdu language which uh, says Sadiqon ki roshni ko kaun dur kar sakta hai? That who can uh, put out the light of the righteous people? So that was a book which uh, he wrote and in which he defended uh, the honor of the promised Messiah Wasalam and replied to various allegations raised by other people. Commenting on this one, it's very interesting that Hazrat Khalifa Tunusi Yawwal uh, addressing Wali Muhammad Ali Sahib, another companion of the Promised Messiah, uh, he said that, uh, look, Mawlvi Sahib, both of us, we have uh, written uh, books on the subject, but look at Mia Mahmud Ahmad Sahib. He has uh, gone ahead of us. He has written something which is much better than any one of us could do. Early in 1911, under the auspices of Hadrat Mulana Nuruddin Halifa Tulmasi I, he founded the Anjumane and Sarula, whose members were required to donate some of their time for religious service, propagation of Islam and Ahmadiyyat, and to promote mutual amity, love and universal fraternity. In September 1912, he travelled to Egypt, thence to Mecca, and performed the Hajj, and remained active in preaching Islam and Ahmadiyyat during his sojourn. In June 1913, he started the Al-Fazl, a newspaper for the Jamaat, in which, apart from the national news, educative, informative, historical, preaching and reformatory articles were published. In a very short time, this paper gained popularity, not only among Ahmadis, but amongst others as well. Later, it became a daily, and has been the official organ of the community since then. During the Hilafat of the Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi I, he went on a preaching tour of several Indian cities. Everyone benefited from his inspiring speeches. In November 1910, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi I fell down while riding a pony and received serious injuries. In November 1910, Hadrat Khalifa the Holy the بدأت تتدهور صحته بسرعة وأحس أن قلبه أيضا أن هذه الوقعة أثرت على قلبه وأحس أن أجله قد دنا واقترب وفي في تلك الحالة وفي الليلة التاسع عشر صباح العشرين من يناير 
قام بكتابة ملحوظة على قصاصة من الورق وطواها ووضعها في ظرف ثم قام بكتابة سطرين 